Anne, and welcome to another Monday Book Tasting. Today, we're going to be reading Once Upon an Eat, Stories of Hope and Joy by 15 Muslim Voices, edited by S.K. Ali and Aisha Saeed. Today, we're going to be doing things a little differently. We're going to read the editor's introduction and then the first few pages of the first short story. As a reminder, um, there are 15 stories in this compilation. They're all written by different authors, but edited by S.K. Ali and Aisha Saeed. Uh, so why are we reading the editor's introduction? Well, I think it's important to kind of get uh, a baseline as to what Eid is. And the introduction is very good for that. It's a good introduction to um, the Muslim culture and the festival of Eid. Um, and why are we reading a story about, you know, Muslim voices, especially, let's say, you might not be Muslim or practicing that faith? Well, two reasons. There's this concept of mirrors and windows, and it's something that's very important to us librarians. First off, mirrors. It's important for people in our community to find books in our collection that reflect who they are. So we do have Muslims in our community, and so it's important that we have books that they can see themselves in, especially kids, so important. But just as important is for us to open up a window to see how other people live their lives. It teaches empathy, compassion, and understanding. So that's why we're reading Once Upon an Eid. I think it's very important for those, those two concepts of mirrors and windows. All right, so now let's read the editor's introduction by S.K. Ali and Aisha Saeed. Dear readers, Eid, the short single syllable word, brings up so many feelings and memories for Muslims. Maybe it's waking up to the sound of frying samosas or the comfort of bean pie. Maybe it's the pleasure of putting on a new outfit for Eid prayers or the giving, the gift giving, holiday parties or carnival rides to come that day. Whatever it may be for most of us who cherish this day of celebration, the emotional response can be summed up in another short sweet word, joy. Eid is an Arabic word meaning celebration or feast that repeats, i.e. that comes around each year. There are two Eids that are primarily celebrated, Eid ul-Fitr and Eid ul-Adha. Eid ul-Fitr is the feast of breaking the fast, marking the ending of Ramadan, the month during which many Muslims fast from dawn to sunset. Eid ul-Adha is the Feast of the Sacrifice, marking the 10th day of the month of Hajjij, during which capable Muslims undertake the pilgrimage to Mecca. While most countries have adopted the solar calendar, which marks months and years based on the sun, Muslim holidays follow the lunar calendar, which follows the monthly cycles of the moon. The lunar calendar operates differently from a solar calendar, and as such, Muslim holidays shift by about 10 days every year. Thus, readers will see that our Eid stories in this collection take place at different times during the year. While many people outside of the faith know about Ramadan and Hajjij, most of the world does not get to see the, world, the joy we feel on Eid in particular. The customs, diverse cultural markers, and family traditions are inside experience, insider experiences seen only within our community. This anthology you are holding opens up the experience to a wide variety of readers, those who celebrate, allowing you to snuggle into the familiar and cozy, and those who don't, allowing you to join in the celebrating. We hope all feel welcome to the feast of stories we have laid out for you. There are almost 2 billion Muslims around the world, and we come from very different, many different way, walks of life and cultures. As a result, the way that Eid is celebrated can vary from family to family, culture to culture, community to community, and country to country. However, what unites all Muslims during these holidays, from the Ugyar community in Central Asia to the Hui um, Muslims of China to the large Muslim community in Argentina, is our shared faith and shared joy at celebrating this festive day. We believe the stories in this anthology capture this mutual joy, and for this reason that we are tr thrilled to share this book with you. Within these pages, Yomi Hawa, who is nervous about reuniting with her extended family for the Eid holiday in the Bronx. Yomi Basim, who is figuring out his first Eid in a 
refugee community off of the coast of Greece. And you'll also meet Adam and Hannah, two siblings sharing a hilarious car ride on the way to celebrate Eid with relatives in Australia. These are just some of the amazing characters you'll meet in this vibrated, vibrant collection of stories. We hope the joy will resonate with all kids, Muslim or not, and unite us all in celebration. With love, F.K. Ali and Aisha Said. All right, so the first story in this anthology is called Perfect by Jamila Tompkins Bigelow. And it does have a little picture, so I wanted to show. Mom, Dad, and I got off the bus somewhere in New York City, and it looked like all the people in Philadelphia times 10 had dumped on each other on each block. They must have all been running late because everyone was speed walking. I wasn't in any hurry. We were spending Eid here in a strange city with a new family who didn't act, act much like family. Mom tripped after long-legged dad, a former New Yorker who strode through the crowds, wheeling a large suitcase wearing my lime green sneakers and a matching hijab that whipped behind me in the spring breeze. I followed with a supermodel strut. I imagined the people rushing past me, stopping and cheering for me. Hawa, the 12-year-old black American hijabi nista on the runway. Hurry up, Hawa, mom yelled. Stop trying to be cute. I ignored her, adding a sachet to my step. We followed dad down the steps to a grimy, dark, underground station and sprinted towards the, towards the roar of an arriving train. Train to the Bronx, Dad explained as we hopped inside. I sat between Dad and Mom, who pulled out her phone and opened up her language app for the tenth time this trip. I couldn't stop myself from rolling my eyes. Say it with me, tu nan te, tu nan te. Mom was almost shouting like Senor Moreno in sixth grade Spanish. I repeated her quietly. Maybe I could disappear into my jeans if I stared at them long enough. You're not even trying, Hawa. I looked pleadingly at Dad. She's doing okay. Don't worry, Amina, my father said to her. His African accent thick. He patted my braided hair and smiled. This is my true Mandinka girl. I didn't feel like a true Mandinka anything, but I smiled back. My father's wide, childlike grin makes me feel even when I don't feel like it. Amandu, how can she, how's she gonna talk to anyone? Mom asked, her North Philly accent thick too. Your aunt don't speak a word of English. Why couldn't mom stop worrying about dad's family? Last year when we first met dad's side of the family, they weren't worried about mom. Mom was gripping her phone a bit too tightly. I rubbed the back of her dark headscarf the way she sometimes does to mine. Her grip stayed tight. I can talk for us, Dad said. And Mariama speaks some English. Hawa can talk to Fanta. Fanta speaks perfect, like an American. I held back a groan. I just want Hawa to be proud of all the parts of who she is, Mom looked hard at me. You are Black American and Mandinka. Both are strong cultures. Love all of you, Hawa. Mom turned back to her phone, squaring her shoulders, and saying the words on her app to herself now. It was hard to love the idea of spending my Eid with Dad's family from Guinea tomorrow instead of spending it with my best friends, Sanai and Kalila. I would miss the park where almost all of Philly's Black American Muslims gathered each Eid to celebrate in their best clothes. I smiled when I thought about my Eid dress, a shimmery coral abaya with a matching jacket so long it reached the floor. I still couldn't believe Mom had let me get it along with a turquoise purse and a tur turquoise sandals. Mom always said I do too much when it comes to color. She likes dark and simple hijabs and abayas. We were on that rocking train for so long, I was almost dozing when Dad shot up from his seat. We're here. I took a deep breath. <sighs> this year would not be a repeat of the last. Dad's family was waiting outside the train station. Old Mama Dusu, Dad's aunt, and her son, my uncle Kaba, Aunt Mariama, Kaba's wife, and their four little sons, and of course, perfect Fanta. As the adults chattered in, Mandinka, and the boys ran in circles, I tried not to look at Fanta, although I felt her looking at me. Mom grinned at Mama Dusu and Aunt Mariama. Masalamu alaikum, 
Ta nan te la, she said slowly and carefully. Her way of saying it sounded more silly than African, but Mom was smiling like she had said a magical spell when she asked them how they were doing. Mama Dusu and Aunt Mariama gasped and then laughed. I squeezed the handle of my suitcase. Welcome, my sister, Aunt Mariama said, hugging Mom tightly. Mama Dusu, unspeaking of smiling, took Mom's smooth brown hand with her two wrinkled ones and stared into her eyes, telling her welcome in her own way. I realized then that their laughs were some warm, kind ones. Fonta was laughing too. I made my eyes into slits, letting her know I wasn't playing any games after what she did last year. Fonta raised her eyebrows, then looked down. The woman began talking fast, with Aunt Mariama flipping back and forth between English and Mandinka to include both women in the conversation. Mom's smile was huge now. Come talk to your cousin, don't be shy. Dad grabbed my hand and pulled me towards Fanta. Uncle Amadou, I missed you, Fanta squealed. Then, as if I were a little girl and not her same age, she exclaimed, and hawa, you're almost as tall as me now. I gritted out a grin. Almost. I was nowhere close. I had inherited my mom's short roundness, not like dad's family, who all had long, thin bodies. You two look more like each day both so beautiful, Dad continued. Fanta looked down. She probably knew he really meant her. He really meant her. Fanta had the kind of face that YouTubers show you how to paint on, with all the contours. Except she didn't have any makeup on. Her dark skin glowed naturally. My dark skin was just dark. No glow. Mom calls my features striking. I have too big eyes, a too big nose, and much too large lips crammed into a small face. I do have an amazing walk, though. We trudged a few blocks to their building and went up in a dim elevator that smelled like spices that had sat there too long. A fresher smell of tender meats, stewed tomatoes, fried onions, fragrant peppers, and sweet cabbage filled their apartment. It was the last day of Ramadan. However, traveling Muslims don't have to fast, so Aunt Mariama had cooked jollof rice for us. Smiling, she handed us large bowls I dug in, stuffing a heap had heaping spoonful into my mouth. The tender beef melted on my tongue. I scooped up another spoonful with a strange looking string bean. I gagged, coughing up my food into a paper towel. My whole mouth was burning. Mom was taking small bites and discreetly drinking sips of water after each one. Dad, though, was quickly clearing his bowl. They aren't used to it, Dad explained. I use mild spices at home and for Americans at my restaurant. I add the strong ones for the Africans. I almost asked Dad, wasn't I supposed to be African too? So much for being a perfect Mandinka girl. Aunt Mariama looked pained. It's good, Aunt Mariama, I said, nibbling on a small spoonful, blinking back the tears in my eyes. If you can take spice, have plantains. I made them. Fanta suggested that with a smile again. Thanks, I mumbled. The sweet, soft plantains did help, but that annoyed me. How could a girl my age make plantains like that? Fanta, you cooking already? Mom asked. Yes. Fanta's eyes lit up. I love cooking. I'm baking cupcakes for Eid. She used to watch me cook and learn how to cook African food. Now she watches cooking shows and cooks American foods too, Aunt Mariama explained, pride in her voice. Could you teach me how to cook soul food, Aunt Amina? Fanta asked. Oh, of course, Mom exclaimed. I had to hand it to my cousin. No one was a better suck-up. You hear that, Hawa? Mom said, it's time you learn how to cook too. Uh, no thanks, I said. Fanta looked away, then stared at the floor. Mom glared at me until I looked away. I knew I was being rude, but I couldn't stop myself. So that's just the first part of that first um, short story in this compilation of short stories. Um, some other books that might be of interest to you. If you end up liking this and you want to read something else with um, either Muslim voices or characters from um, Arab or Muslim countries. Uh, so one of the books is Amina's uh, Voice by Hannah Khan. So that might be a good one. Uh, that's a Muslim American who's trying to just fit in and she's a middle schooler. Um, another one is Words from, I think it's Words from Home by Jasmina Warga. So that'd be a good one. And uh, Turtle of Oman, 
um, would be another good read alike for, for the stories that are in here. Um, we hope that you guys enjoyed um, this read alike. We'll be back uh, and, you know, um, our Monday book tasting. We'll be back next week with another uh, story to read aloud. Um, and as always, we hope to see you very soon at the Warminster Library.